Hey everyone and welcome to episode 13 of Stripped Music Diary. I'm Shannon and this week I am reviewing the new Eagles of Death Metal DVD, I Love You All the Time. Now, this thing is slated to come out on August 4th. I received a promo copy and I watched it on Saturday so I could tell all of you nice people all about it. Now, if you're listening and you don't know about the band Eagles of Death Metal, that's okay. You don't have to. You can listen intently and I will tell you about the things that I know about Eagles of Death Metal, which is not a whole lot. So I won't be rambling forever. So that actually might be a good thing. Um, So I have only been a fan of this band for about a year. And as many of you may have already guessed, it's because the drummer, at least on the studio recordings, is Josh Homme from Queens of the Stone Age and Caius. And I say that many of you may already know that because I've mentioned in several other episodes, if you haven't listened to um, all my episodes or you're just finding this podcast, I am a huge Queens of the Stone Age fan. And I was drawn to Eagles of Death Metal because of his participation in in the band. Now, my listening goes as far as, or my fandom goes as far as, um, like, just listening to the records. So I, I haven't really checked out anything live, and I'm, I'm basically just playing catch-up. And from what I've read and understand about the frontman of Eagles of Death Metal, Jesse Hughes, he likes to live his life in the spotlight. It seems almost like he does it begrudgingly, like he really doesn't like it, but also that he loves it because they have many documentaries, including a a, a documentary that came out in 2015 called The Redemption of the Devil. And from what I understand, he was followed around by a film crew for a year to get a lot of this uh, footage about his life and stuff like that and how he ended up becoming an ordained Catholic minister and I think he's um, now engaged to her but it it kind of covered his relationship with an ex-porn star and uh, that sort of thing. So this is a guy who definitely likes to be in the spotlight. He's a really enigmatic front man if you um, do get a chance to watch something live from them. But this was my first experience with this DVD. I had never heard a live recording. I've actually, for one reason or another, never checked out any uh, live YouTube videos, nothing like that. So I was just, you know, a blank slate as far as what my expectations were for watching this. But I was intrigued because I knew Josh Hami was actually drumming on it. So he doesn't normally tour with the band. Uh, he doesn't normally play the live shows. And he's in a lot of the documentaries and interviews about the band because he is on the studio albums and that sort of thing. But uh, jo- Jesse Hughes has been Josh Hami's friend since they're about 13 years old. And he gave Jesse Hughes, Josh gave Jesse Hughes the nickname The Devil, uh, which is why that documentary is called The Redemption of the Devil. So there's a little bit of a background for you. And the band Eagles of Death Metal, they're not a death metal band, uh, if you don't know already. (laughs) And also, uh, they started in like 1998, I think. Yeah, 1998. And then they released their first... Uh, their first full-length album in I think it was like 2004 um, and that album's called Peace, Love, and Death Metal and that is the first thing I heard from this band and I just really thought it was catchy it was a little bit cock rock in a way and it was just really like danceable rock and roll and there's only one way to describe the album it's just straight up in your face rock and roll and 
I could hear Josh Homme singing the background vocals and I you know that that added to the appeal of it for me as being a Queens of the Stone Age fan so I got these songs stuck in my head so much that I I finally procured the album and became a fan and this this year earlier this year they released another album called Zipper Down it's their fourth uh, full-length album and they went out to tour on on the record and they were in Paris France and they were slated to play a sold out show on November 13th 2015 and they began the show and everything you know was fine or seemed fine but unfortunately a terrorist attack ensued and 89 people were were killed at this show and the band members were able to escape with their lives however um, like I said 89 people died including their touring merch guy their British touring guy that um, did merch for them and so Jesse Hughes ran out I guess he had an encounter in the hallway with the gunman and just ran the other way and he texts Josh Homme who was home in the states he didn't play this show and um told him you know everyone's covered in or I'm covered in blood everyone's dead and there that sort of thing so it's obviously really scary and a really terrible thing that to have happened and the band ultimately ended up coming back to Paris to basically finish the show that they they couldn't finish because of this attack and they came back on February 16th 2016 and they played at the Olympia and this DVD that's coming out on August 4th I love you all the time is the recording of of that show though them coming back to um to Paris to play again so I took some notes while while watching it as a first time um, you know basically a first time concert goer of Eagles of Death Metal so to speak Um, and I just wanted to kind of compare you know my thoughts on their records versus the live show and just a couple of things that I noticed in the DVD that I hope won't spoil it too much, but um, you can leave comments if you agree or disagree. But I I do want to say that I'm not somebody who feels like the record has to sound, uh, you know, like they like a band does when they're live or that a live performance has to sound like the record, vice versa. But when it's really different, it, it just takes me aback like I am a little bit like whoa that's that's kind of weird and that happened immediately when the band they come out on stage and they're blowing kisses and Jesse Hughes is just really he's really on (laughs) and he's like you know trying trying his best to convey without words because he's just walking around the stage, you know, without a mic at first. He's trying to convey, you know, his love and gratitude and just appreciation for this Paris crowd. And just, he's just showing the love. So uh, then they they launch into their first song, which is I Only Want You. And right off the bat, I noticed that on the record, they, the, the vocals are very high pitched. And if you don't know this song, then I don't go check it out. YouTube it. I'm not going to play it. (laughs) So I'm going to play some songs, just not that one, um, because I have more to talk about. But like I said, the, the like he sings in a higher octave and it's fine. But it just really took me aback that on this live DVD, he does not sing like that. So that was a little strange. And um, and then by track three, we see Josh Homme um, starting to kind of sing and come alive a little bit. However, he never really breaks through to the like participation 
side or the participation level he he does like a tiny tiny bit however his role in this band from what i've seen on this dvd and a couple other live videos i've watched after watching this dvd he's very like this is not really my band it's very subdued and he you can tell is happy to be there and he is you know enjoying his time with his friend and every time i've seen interviews with with he and jesse they they have this like really natural back and forth where you can tell they've been friends for years and they really do enjoy each other's company (laughs) but just i don't know it's hard to describe but with the show he he was just like i'm here i'm the drummer so that's fine but you know it's just that's that was my observation also he really enjoys the cowbell (laughs) that band just has a um like on the record too a lot of the songs have cowbell in it and um it's you know the drummer which is josh homie at this point in the show hitting that and it's just it's pretty entertaining and so i wanted to mention also that there are like maybe four costume changes throughout this show so we're on like costume change one um, at this point, but it was like around song four, um, maybe five. I, I think it was when they played I Love You All the Time, the title of this DVD track, uh, that somebody, I think from the crowd, throws a French scarf on, on the stage. It looked like it was like hand knitted, but, uh, Jesse Hughes is wearing it. I, I kind of looked away from it and then he looked back and he was like, wearing the scarf so i don't know if he just had it or someone threw it on stage but either way um he sings i love you all the time in french like the chorus and stuff like that so you know a little like tip of the hat to the uh french crowd there and stuff like that but my general observation here like i said the is the vocal discrepancy and I don't know why it's such a big deal to me, but it is. And I it's not like I don't like it. It's just really it just really threw me for a loop. So I'm gonna play a little bit of the song Whore Hoppin. It's it's parentheses shit goddamn. It's from the album Peace Love and Death Metal. So here's what it normally sounds like. Shit goddamn I'm a man, I'm a man. Okay, and here is a live recording of that same song. Do you see what I mean there? Uh, There's just such a difference, and... Like I said before, it's not a bad thing, but don't record your records with such a high octave and then don't do it live. It's just, it's weird. Uh, but like I said, I don't, I don't hate it. It's just, it just really, really threw me off <laughs> and that's okay. But on top of, on on top of that and Jesse Hughes being such a enigmatic front man, I, I wasn't ready really for the dance moves that he does. I, I didn't know about that. I didn't know that was like his thing. And it was pretty entertaining. But for me, I was just kind of like, what? <laughs> uh, but it's really, really reminiscent of uh, Sticky Fingers era Rolling Stones or just Mick Jagger in general. His dance moves are so... Mick Jagger. So if you like those kind of dance moves then and you don't know about this band, maybe <laughs> maybe that's the thing that will draw you in those dance moves because they were something else. And so this band it's just they're just known for being bizarre and having a flashy big rock and roll sound and I mean, they did the rock and roll thing too. They smashed guitars and stuff, but they also 
do some unexpected things aside from costume changes <laughs> but they brought out um a second drummer that it's one of, he's one of their live touring drummers and they set him up with a kit and i think it was maybe like halfway through maybe even like a little bit before that um through their you know dvd through their set list that they brought this other guy out and then there was a dueling drummers thing for the rest of for the rest of the show where Josh Homme he would sometimes take a break and be sitting there smoking and then the other gentleman I I don't know his name I didn't screenshot the um the credits at the end but he was like reading a book at one point uh just to like be funny and of course their name is sort of um, satirical as well, the Eagles of Death Metal, because they're not a death metal band. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're a really bizarre band, and they cover on their first album, Peace, Love, and Death Metal, Steelers Wheels, uh, Stuck in the Metal, Stuck in the Middle with You, but they call it Stuck in the Metal with You. Um, and then on their newest album, Zipper Down, they cover Duran Duran's Save a Prayer, but they do a really good job at playing at, at that song. They, they do an excellent job. This like slide guitar on it is awesome. So, um, they, they have some just really, really strong songs and just a really energetic vibe. And they also have like a kind of weird desert redneck vibe too, <laughs> uh, because they have this guy that was playing in the uh, Paris DVD that looks like he's straight out of ZZ Top. He has like a ZZ Top beard. He's wearing shades the whole time. He's playing a flying V guitar, and everybody's wearing or everyone's wearing like these like kind of like country western style button up shirts except Josh Homme because I guess they said uh, Jesse Hughes says in the DVD that Josh's matching shirt um, it they didn't make it the right size because uh, they were they were custom made or something like that so um, yeah so basically um, they they cover the Steelers wheels Steelers wheel cover <laughs> stuck in the middle with you uh, with a really great energy, but it's sort of like fleeting because even though that was really, really great and strong, they played the song Miss Alyssa right after that, and it was just really weak, in my opinion. So it was just this give and take of like, wow, that was great. That was great energy. He's smashing guitars. He's dancing. They're suspenders. That fucking mustache. It's all so great. But then they'll look, they kind of rip it away by like doing this flat version of Miss Alyssa, which is probably my, one of my top three favorite Eagles of Death Metal songs. So I'm going to play in homage to, to that um, scenario, <laughs> to that happening. Uh, I'm going to play the studio album version of Miss Alyssa now. So from the album Peace, Love, and Death Metal... Here it is. Yeah. 
Every song can be like this super powerful banger live, but I just feel like they could have put a lot more energy into that and got the crowd just really, really into it, but they didn't. And that's all right. It's just my opinion. I feel like there's a lot of reasons why bands don't do that or they just kind of, you know, tear through a song just because they know the audience wants to hear it, but maybe they hate it they hate playing it or whatever reason behind it they they just don't you know put all their efforts in into that song live and you know maybe the other times they they do it where that song's the more powerful song but this particular dvd it's not and it sort of just bummed me out because on a selfish level it's just one of my one of my favorite songs um so that being said, um, they finish up the set and they just, you know, throughout the whole thing sort of just show love to the audience and they don't really address what happened and you don't see uh, any security detail at all. But, you know, I'm sure there's, um, you know, tons and tons of security there, but it's not really directly addressed. It's just kind of like, you know, really tastefully done and and he he just is very warm to the audience and um just just showing them love like i said and so it's that was a that was a really nice part to to the show and josh homie was not there the first time when this terrorist attack happened so in like i said his role in this band is pretty subdued so um, he didn't, he didn't say much either, but, um, there are a few other documentaries floating around besides, uh, the redemption of the devil. There's death by sexy. And then there's another one that came out this year that Colin Hanks put together, uh, Tom Hanks, son. He's a big, big music fan. And he did a documentary about tower records, um, I think it was a couple of years ago now, but he put together um, some interviews and things like that with Jesse Hughes talking about the attack on the um, on the the venue. I I know what it's called, Bad Bad of Van. Bad, I don't. I can't. I can't pronounce it though. Is the issue? Um, so um, he Colin Hanks released this documentary and it aired on HBO in February and I haven't seen it and it's French for our friends I think is um, is the name of it so I've been wanting to watch that but I I haven't gotten around to it yet but apparently it's kind of on the emotional side um, but what I wanted to say here toward the end um, is that you wouldn't know the power that Josh Homme has if this was your first experience with with him. You wouldn't know based on his role in this band, and that that was kind of my takeaway for, with like regarding him with watching this DVD. And I also didn't realize the showmanship that J- Jesse Hughes. Um, shows in in his live performances. I didn't know that they were like known to be this really exciting live show or something like that. So that was that was a pleasant surprise. But reading about him as a person, I found him to be even more interesting. Um, and I kind of fell down the rabbit hole after watching this documentary a little bit last night and then some more today. Um, and I found out that the documentary, The Redemption of the Devil, uh, he goes into detail about being a Republican and a member of the NRA. And he's like shooting up a Chinese flag at one point. 
Um, but he says something, and I don't know if it's from that interview, but I watched a YouTube clip about he and Josh Homme being conservative, but also having a very, very liberal ideas too. So uh, either way, he's a strange and interesting person. And I've been trying to find out more about strange people like that like I I've basically been interested in people who just leave kind of lead kind of eccentric lives and that's sort of where my zine I'm writing came from in a way is because Isaac Brock from Modest Mouse is a really strange guy and I love that about him he's really interesting to me so naturally I was drawn to the strangeness of Jesse Hughes and despite the fact that he says that he's a Republican and he supports the NRA and stuff like that and that how and he's just always constantly talking about how how much drugs he does or I think he said um, in an interview that I read that no one does more speed than him or no one does more drugs than him and he's talking about taking speed but if you watch he and Josh Homme together they're like never ever ever serious so it's kind of like is this just the persona that he wants to convey or is this for real I'm sure like you know it is for real but he is kind of an actor and a showman and it seems like he just wants to live his whole life like that too like it just everything's just really big and elaborate with him is was like what i gathered from from all this uh research i've been <laughs> doing <laughs> um playing catch up and stuff but uh if you watch him, him and Josh Homme they they really do not conduct a very serious interview. I, I absolutely love their sense of humor. I could watch interviews with them both all day. Is They're so hilarious and sarcastic. It's awesome. But it got me thinking kind of about people in the spotlight and you get asked the same boring shit questions all the time and it just must get so annoying. I just really love that they're able to kind of sidestep that and and uh, give these sort of smug, sarcastic answers. It's just really perfect. They're they're both obviously really intelligent, witty, funny people, and I I just really enjoy watching them, um, especially go back and forth with each other. But even s uh, separately, they conduct a, a really good interview and I started thinking about other people who've sort of done this and nobody is nobody's like them I, I think they are some of the funniest people to watch being interviewed that I've ever seen and I've watched a lot of music interviews and I've seen a lot of them go bad I, I watched that blur interview with Nardwar <laughs> where they get all angry and throw things and I've seen some pretty difficult interviews where, you know, people, I think it was, um, it was Billy Corgan was interviewing Nick Cave and Nick Cave got really angry and was like, called him elementary or something like that because the questions were just really mundane. And then Billy Corgan said that the Bad Seeds were a British band <laughs> and Nick Cave just like yelled at him. So I've seen sort of like awkward and bad interviews, but as far as just sort like really skirting the questions, but not really skirting them and just being really, really funny and sarcastic, they definitely take the cake. And the only ones who sort of come close to that are the band MGMT. And they don't really do it anymore because I think they realize that like that's kind of a dick move in a way and they weren't that big of rock stars or something I don't really know but they they started to be nicer in, in their interviews maybe their label made them do it I don't know but they used to just answer everything with like really ridiculous answers and 
they would say in a lot of interviews that the song Time to Pretend was about a grasshopper or a praying mantis. It was about, <laughs> it was about a praying mantis and this whole elaborate story behind it. And then uh, my friend today at the record store told me that my coworker at the record store told me that one time they accepted some kids choice award or something. And they, instead of doing like any type of speech, Andrew Van Wingarden, the singer (laughs) just like whips out like a plastic spider. I was like, Oh, or a gummy spider or something. I was like, I got this spider. And then, Ben, the guitarist, and the other guy in MGMT was just like, fuck yeah, and held up the award, and they just, like, walked off stage, but if you watch, there's, I think it's, like, a French or Polish interview, they're just being completely sarcastic, it's almost like they're being kind of assholes, but I love it, I think it's great, and it makes for a much entertaining interview than just being asked, you know, Oh, how does it feel to have a hit song? (laughs) So in the spirit of that, I am going to play an MGMT song now. This is from their Time to Pretend EP. It's called Indie Rockers, and it's kind of a a dark song. It's, It's really good, though. It's a departure from Time to Pretend and Electric Feel. So hope you enjoy it. If you like it, check it out on iTunes. I think I'm buy it on there but that's where I think where I got it originally but I've had it a long time so enjoy uh, indie rockers
like the aesthetic of that song. It's it's very dark and dirty, kind of like a Queens of the Stone Age song. <laughs> but I wanted to say before, too, but I forgot, um, during the Eagles of Death Metal DVD, Jesse Hughes kind of gets down in the crowd. He takes his guitar out into the audience, and that was really cool. But I just don't really understand why they had this sort of back and forth with like some songs were flat and boring and some were just so, so powerful. But I I guess I'm just going to chalk it up to what I mentioned before that they just play a lot of songs and not every song can be, you know, this big epic thing. And also that, you know, there's underlying reasons sometimes why bands don't want to play it but overall the the dvd is great you should check it out if you're a fan i highly recommend it i am not a super fan but it was really awesome to see josh homme playing drums and a little bit of his his humor and they do quite a few songs they do i think it's something close to 20 songs maybe and I know some of them are short but they do both of their covers and that uh save a prayer that Duran Duran song is it's so awesome and it's I don't know the tv is worth it just for just for a couple songs alone like that and at the end Jesse Hughes is down to his like, bare bare chest he's down to no shirt after changing shirts three times and he t- like walks off the stage wearing a cape. It's just, it's really, it's a rock and roll show. It's really elaborate and it's, it's a great, it's a great show, a great performance. And uh, the, the dueling drummers was like, was a really nice touch. So I know I said some critical things here. <laughs> I, I had some critiques, but not everything's going to be everybody's cup of tea you know and eagles of death metal are playing here in florida i think it's in october i don't remember i just made that up but they are playing but i just don't know when but it's going to be in orlando and i'm pretty excited about it um but i guess my thinking about artists that are difficult to interview was you know spun from from eagles of death metal and thinking about uh, jesse and josh being interviewed and i couldn't help but think of like while i'm watching some of the the documentary footage um from the redemption of the devil that (laughs) like lou reed would approve of this because lou reed is was like notorious for like making mincemeat out of interviewers and I feel like they would have they would make Lou Reed proud and another person that came to mind is um I'm gonna play a song in a second by by him but it's Jay Maskus of Dinosaur Jr. He's notoriously prickly and just really reserved he he there aren't very many interviews of him but he was on what the fuck with Mark Marin, the uh, WTF podcast, and that's a really great interview if you um, if you get a chance to listen to it because Mark Marin doesn't interview musicians too much, but he does the ones he really really admires. So that and there's I think like one other eight minute YouTube thing, but <laughs> you can tell it's a little tongue in cheek and he's he's a little sassy in it, but that's okay and it makes me love it so much more. So I am going to close out the podcast here with a Jay Maskus song. Well, it's actually a Mazzy Star song. It's Fade Into You. Jay Maskus covers it and there's a live version you can watch on YouTube with uh, Fred Armisen playing guitar on it too. I don't know if he plays on the uh, album version or studio version, but this song I don't think is on any on any album. It, it, the the one that I downloaded from iTunes, it was like a sub pop sampler cover was like the cover photo for it. So I don't I don't really know, but um, I just wanted to say as always, I really appreciate everybody listening and I know this was very
concentrated on one band. I don't normally do that if you are just tuning in. I normally kind of talk about at least five or six different bands, but I hope it was enjoyable nonetheless. And if you are a fan of Eagles of Death Metal, like I said, check out this DVD. It's out on August 4th and hope this review did it some justice, helped you out. And if you want to follow this podcast, you can find me on Instagram. The username is stripped, S-T-R-I-P-P-E period D. You can find me on Facebook if you just search for Stripped Music Diary, YouTube, and you can subscribe on iTunes or SoundCloud to get notified when new episodes come out. And you can also listen to the podcast now on Stitcher and the podcast app on your mobile device. So as always, I appreciate you guys listening and I'll go ahead and close it out here with Jay Maskus from Dinosaur Jr. playing Mazzy Stars Fade Into You. Take a breath that's true I look to you and I see nothing I look to you to see the truth You live your life, you go in shadow Apart and you go blind. Some kind of night into your darkness. Colors your eyes with what's not there. Fade. strange